Hey good people, it is Tashira from Politics and Fashion here today with a video that is an anti-haul. Now I've done one of these before because I love the idea of sharing with you all not just what I want to welcome into my wardrobe but also what I'm not going to be able to do. And you all will be surprised because this list is not all about things that I dislike, it's actually things that I love, some of them. I just have to have some discipline, respect myself y'all, some self-respect. And my bank account says, you don't need that thing. And I want to normalize that on the internet. It does not have to always be about mass consumption. And so if you're on that ministry as well, you went to the right place, my friend, let's jump into the video. Everything that I am wearing today is going to be linked down below, including this new Dior lip oil. It has just a little bit of color, but mostly what I love about it is the shine, honey. It has a great shine to it. And it's super hydrating. So I am pairing this today with this other Dior lip. This is one of their lip maximizers. Funny story, I thought I was buying this. I thought I was buying a lip oil, but the sales associate gave me lip this. And I didn't feel like taking it back, so... That's the Bad B collabo for today. I'll make sure she's linked. Number one, y'all, is ballet flats. Ballet flats. Any designer but ballet flat, I don't know why we're here. How did we get here? What wrong turn did we make that we landed here? Okay, we didn't land on ballet flats. Ballet flats landed on us. And this is a trend that is at the top of my anti-haul list. Hear me out. Hear me out, y'all. Um, I shared with you in my Tory Burch video that I truly believe, and I'm sorry if this is gonna ruffle some feathers, that round-toed flats are made for children on Easter Sunday. Patent leather with a pair of socks. Okay, that is how you wear a ballet flat. I don't, for the life of me, my brain cannot comprehend this style of shoe on an adult, someone of a big age, who has a mortgage, a car payment, student loans, who has responsibilities, okay, children of their own. Why you would put something like this Prada shoe on your feet? We're being trolled because there is no way. Not only is it a ballet flat, but they have the nerve to make it puffy. It's like, it's just like for Shrek's little sister. I don't know why that came to mind, but I can't. It is reprehensible, so I don't even know who is that for. Now, the ones that girl really burn my biscuits, I gotta keep it a stack with y'all. And you all already know how I feel about this brand from my quiet luxury video, but let's bring it back to the top. Kate. What is this? It looks like she has chicken pox. on her feet. And I think what really confuses me is how high the shoe comes up on your foot. And so you're showing no toe cleavage whatsoever, yet it's sheer and it encases your whole foot and it's round. What am I looking at? It is one of the most per perplexing moments in fashion we've probably ever been in, my friends. And then just as I suspected, because we know that things on the high street take their cue from what comes down the runway, what design houses are doing, there is also a pair that is a Kate dupe by Loeffler Randall. And it has the nerve to have a strap around it and a bow in the front. These things are for children, I'm telling you. I'm telling you that they are made for children and I think maybe when they were back in the back, the children's department and the adults, like they got swapped. 
Now, one thing I can say, if you paid me enough and you talked to me nice, because I'm going to be fair, if you paid me enough and you talked to me real nice, this Valentino pair, I, I may, because I do have a, 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 a penchant for an ugly shoe, and we know this. So take everything that I'm about to say in this video with a grain of salt. Just sis, if you like it, I love it, you work, I want you to spend your money exactly how you choose. And so I'm gonna say with a mild caveat that I might be able to be convinced to put these on, because there's something about that rock stud that I do find interesting and the crisscross of the shoe in the front. But what I'm ne never, not on nary day, gonna be able to jump on the bandwagon to do is the front of this shoe it is so round and it has a bow there's no reason for me to go on i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna be able to do the the ballet flats so let's move on Next up is something that actually has been trending for a while, and um, I knew it wasn't for me from the moment that I saw it. Uh, cartoon fashion, really of any type. And I think the design house that has made this the most popular, and we've seen replicas and dupes and inspired by pieces from this design house, the most, as you know, is Loewe Bang. And we're gonna start with the sunglasses. Um, Y'all, many of the fashion girls have these people who I know and who I love, okay? So please know if someone once made the mistake of saying in the comments, I would never talk about my friends <laughs> directly and directly or the things that they have. That's not what this is about. But just like you and your best friend don't like the same things, me and the people I love in my life online and off don't always love the same things. And these sunglasses to me look like, do you remember that episode of Martin when he had gotten that fight with Tommy the Hitman Hearns? I'll put a picture right here. Or Will Smith when he went out on the date and Hitch and he thought he was being sexy and he had had an allergic reaction. When I saw them, the first thing I thought to myself was this looks like somebody is sick. Like where I was looking for the Benadryl. Because <laughs> like it looks like your eyes are swollen. And I cannot get past that. I cannot. I just, no. And the fact that these have taken on a life of their own I am more than willing to say the problem is me. I'm the one that has the problem because everybody else seems to love them and I will own that. I just can't see it. And so obviously I feel like what they did and, and you know, they, they had a, a moment with the sun, sunglasses. They said, oh, people like these. Let's go ahead and keep the party going. And I steer clear of every piece of kind of cartoonish fashion that that brand has. It is not for me. Let's stick with Loewe for a while because I don't know, I don't know who's in the back. <laughs> it's somebody who really had a fascination with like Tom and Jerry, Popeye, <laughs> some, I don't, Road Runner, like those cartoons of the late 70s, early 80s, like somebody in the back had a fascination because when I saw these Betty Boop 3000s, girl, I was undone. Not gonna spend a lot of time here because you see them. I don't even have to explain why that's on the anti haul list. Then there's these. No one should be in possession of that many balloons unless you're a clown. I'm, I'm, um, and I'm not calling the person that's wearing the shoes a clown. I'm just saying for me, myself, personally, if I had that amount of balloons in my possession, I would be at a children's birthday party as a side hustle. You see what I'm saying? I believe in multiple streams of income. 
So that is the only reason that I that I think that would be appropriate. You know, for like a real fancy clown. You know what I'm saying? Like who wanted to wear stilettos, pumps down at at, at the clown club? They say Ringling Brothers. Universal Circus, we getting together, all the clowns getting together, we're gonna have us a little kickback. And then, and then the clown was like, oh, I got something for that ass. Let me go ahead and pull it. No, no, let's, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on because that's not happening. And then we have these Prada ones to get off of the, the people down at Loewe. I actually love Loewe as a brand, by the way. Uh, we have this Prada version of the soft padded Napa leather sab sabots or sabots. Um, here's what I'm noticing. I think the through line here is the puffiness. And I love puffy handbags, but I think it's the puffiness in the sunglasses and also in the shoes that I'm reacting to. Because here's what's important to me, y'all, with making these kinds of lists. That when you are in a fashion space, when you are consuming a lot of fashion content, it is very easy for things to grow on you. And sometimes it's like a parasite, okay? <laughs> Don't be the host. That's what I have to constantly remind myself of. And so... It's really good to know your style and know what you don't like. And because my style pillar is elevated simplicity, that's in my ebook, How to Declutter Your Wardrobe and Curate a Style That You Love, this is not something that I think of would go along with my style pillar, right? And so that is, it, it's no wonder that that puffiness is a big turnoff to me because it just doesn't look very kind of sophisticated or dare I say style forward for me. Like if my child had like a fly ass Geranimals outfit, I'm talking about my toddler and I was like, you about to put on your Geranimals best. I would pull out a pair of these to go along with it. Do you, do you see? And I think, I think that is the theme here. So you get the picture. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> and then let's go to something that I actually love, which is the Mew Mew thong sandal boot. I'm not sure the exact name of it. Um, but I like these. I have liked them since the moment that I saw them. I first saw them on my friend Janae. And I love the way that she rocks these, especially when she wears them with skirts. Like, they're really good, y'all. And if they were not two bands, they would probably actually be something that I would really want for fall, especially because I'm in the Northeast, um, I'm in the DC Metro, so it doesn't really get cold here until like November. Um, and so I have a few months of fall where these would actually be a good transition shoe. But I think it's the price for me, y'all, that is holding me back on them. And I know they have been duped, and so I may consider that. But at $2,000 for something that we have to admit is a trendy shoe, that's hard for me. That That is hard for me. And so I would put it on my anti-haul list because I don't even want to tempt myself with a good time. I'm going to respect myself and just walk away from the thing, push away from the table from the thing that I love to make room for something else that I'm sure will come my way. And this is an item, y'all, it has me in a chokehold. It does. Every time I see it, I think I need it. The angel on my shoulder is saying, no, you don't. The devil on my shoulder is saying, girl, you work. Spend your money how you choose. <laughs> and I have to just reconcile these two things. It is the luxury tank top. Okay, it's a whole category, luxury tank tops, uh, luxury sports bras, like the ones from Celine, the tanks by Loewe, the Prada ones. Again, back to knowing your style. Give me a, just a, a slim, simple silhouette, and I'm going to make that thing shake. I'm going to twerk some with it. I am. I don't need a lot. It don't, it don't take a whole lot. And so, obviously, I would be the person that is in love with the most basic thing, right? But let's go back to having restraint and self-respect. It is a sports bra. It is a tank top. 
And I have heard people say that compared to some other like high quality tanks from places like Massimo Duty and even Koss, that Loewe one, it just, it's kind of tank top. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's just, it's not worth the price. And I mean, these items are five, six, sometimes $700 or more, depending on if they have any embellishments on them. And as much as I honestly, y'all, I honestly love them, I just cannot pull the trigger on something like this. Will I wear it? Yes. Will I get my cost per wear out of it? Maybe. But could I find something that has this same effect that doesn't have a logo? Obviously, right? Obviously. We know the answer to that. And so I just got to walk away. I, I, I just have to walk away. The last category, y'all, for me is like a new in-store Bottega handbags. I worked in a luxury retail during Bottega's resurgence. If you're not new around here, you probably know that. I worked for a caring brand, which is the holding company that has Bottega, Yves Saint Laurent. Um, it has Alexander McQueen, Balenciaga, and other brands. So I worked for one of those brands. Bottega was our sister brand. And so I was able to get Bottega pieces 30% off. And it was right as Daniel Lee had come on as a designer. I mean, I literally saw, like I, my, my boutique was here and Bottega was here. So I saw with my own eyes the first collection drop, I was able to snag a few things, and I was able to get my discount on those things. I also was able to get them at sometimes close to half the price, not because of the discount, but because of how many price increases we've seen. And so I cannot erase that from memory. I don't wanna live in the past, but realistically speaking, nothing about the same, the products that I saw then has changed and I lost my discount. <laughs> to warrant such a tremendous price increase. Now, I understand how capitalism works, right? So of course, with a demand so high and increase in demand is going to come an increase in price. And so that is what we're seeing currently. For example, this sardine bag I think is delicious. I honestly love the Teen Jody. I love the large Jody. I, I, I love all of these bags. I have loved the cassette bag since it first dropped. Fascinated. Fantastic bags. The only Bottega bag that I have currently um, that I bought new from store during that time period is my clutch. So what I've had to reconcile is I'm still very much in love with the brand. I'm very much in love with the handbags. I just am not in love with the price points anymore, okay? So I've had to think about, okay, does that mean that I just like chill out on Bottega right now? Or what's the alternative? And so what I'm thinking the sweet spot for me is going to be is to do either Bottega in Europe, so places where I can get the items um, at a much lower price point as I did with my Loewe puzzle bag, or to look for, and this is very important, vintage pieces um, that I can find online at pre-loved retailers like Fashion Vile, The Real World, etc. Um, and I say vintage specifically because even the new Bottega pieces on the pre-loved market are still, in my opinion, too high. <laughs> okay? So, I don't know, y'all. In some ways, I even think I kind of missed the vintage trail. I got a pink um hobo bag probably about two maybe three years ago now for six hundred dollars six hundred dollars i've sold it because i mean i didn't really have use for a pink bag in my wardrobe but i got that thing for a secret what i would do now to have that bag back in a neutral color because what i would really love is a black one y'all and a black one in good condition is going for over a thousand dollars Again, even the pre-love market for vintage pieces has gone up. And so uh, I'm just sitting here 
waiting patiently to see if some Bottega comes into my life. But as for right now, on my anti-haul list is new Bottega bags in store in the US. We just ain't gonna be able to do it. And that is it, my friends. Thank you for watching today's video. Let me know down below what is on your anti-haul list. Are there items that you actually love that you just like, I ain't gonna be able to do? Or are there items that you don't love and you like, I ain't gonna be able to do? We are a community and I love it when y'all sound off in the comments. Don't forget to follow me all over social media at Politics and Fashion and I will see you good people across the internet. Peace.